Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be revisiting the Dell Optiplex 9020, also known as the GOAT by me. So I first did a video on this PC a while back, and in that video, I called it the best PC I ever purchased. And honestly, I still stand by that statement to this day. Even though this PC is getting pretty old at this point, I still use it every single day. Whether it's checking emails, web browsing, video editing, gaming, retro gaming, you name it, it has never let me down. This was released in 2013, I think, and this so this machine is now over a decade old. But people still love it because, you know, it's so easy to upgrade. In fact, I think it's a fantastic PC for anyone looking to learn about computers in general. So let's go over the specs of my specific setup. So this is powered by an Intel i7 4770 processor, which has four cores and eight threads. It's one of the best CPUs you can put in this particular system. Uh, this also has 16 gigs of RAM. I've got a one terabyte SSD as the boot drive with Windows 10, along with several additional drives I've added over time. And for the GPU, I'm running a GTX 1050 Ti, which works great in the system and doesn't require upgrading the stock 290 watt power supply. As I mentioned, I'm a huge fan of this PC, but with Windows 10 reaching end of life in October of 2025, it's time to consider what comes next. I'll either need to retire this, install Linux in it, or figure out a way to install Windows 11. So what I've done is I've decided to give Windows 11 a shot in this PC. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a little bit of a GPU upgrade, more of that in a moment. So to test Windows 11, what I'm going to be doing is I'm taking a bit of a shortcut. Instead of doing a fresh install, what I've done is I've cloned the drive for my mini PC, which I have, which already has Windows 11 on it, onto a four terabyte, two and a half inch SSD. I'm going to boot into Windows 11 using a USB to SATA adapter to see if the Optiplex runs smoothly with Windows 11 on it. On top of that, I'm going to be swapping out the GTX 1050 Ti with an RTX 3050. This is the 6 gig version. Hopefully this upgrade goes smoothly. And if it does, I should be able to continue using this machine for years to come, even with that older CPU. Now, before we do that, I do want to show you guys a few things with the Optiplex. So here's all the hard drives I have in it. This one is the one terabyte SSD. That's the boot drive with Windows 10. And then I have an additional three and a half inch hard drive here. And I also have more hard drives up here. You see I have three additional three and a half inch uh, mechanical hard drives here. So yeah, a total of five drives here, which is crazy. So the board only has four SATA ports. So in order to make this work, I had to add a PCIe SATA card, which you see underneath the GPU here. So doing that allowed me to add that extra fifth hard drive there. And here's another look at it uh, without the GPU there, just so you know you see what it looks like uh, you know, in the PCIe slot. And I'll leave a link to this below in the description. And when I originally purchased this Optiplex, it had two DVD drive bays here in the front. Now, I didn't need those, so I added these two hard drive hot swap bays. Uh, they were pretty easy to install, and it makes it really easy to get to the hard drive. Uh, keep in mind, again, these are three and a half inch mechanical hard drives. And I just wanted to show you guys just how easy it is to, you know, remove the hard drive and pop it out. And, you know, it's very easy to replace, very convenient. Really loved uh, adding these into the Optiplex. Now, I got the RTX 3050 installed with no issues. So now let's take a look at some benchmarks and some gameplay. All right, first, here's some benchmarks and scores for when the GTX 1050 Ti was installed in the Optiplex. So for Geekbench 6, we have a single core score of 1216 and a multi-core score of 3964. And for the GPU benchmark score, we got 23,045. And the Heaven benchmark score with the GTX 1050 Ti in there 
was uh, FPS of 51.6 and a score of 1300. And here is the benchmark test for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And we got an average FPS score of 50. And here's some Fortnite performance mode 1080p. Alright guys, so now for the rest of the video, I'm going to be using the RTX 3050, which I installed into the Optiplex, and I am booting into Windows 11 through this um, USB to SATA adapter. Um, Windows 11 is installed on this 2.5 inch SSD. Alright, so I had no issues booting into Windows 11 through that uh, USB to SATA adapter. I did run Geek run Geekbench 6 again and these scores are obviously very similar to uh, the first test because this is more um, CPU score uh, but the second score the um, the GPU score so the GPU score we got 58 626 so that's more than double from when I had the GTX 1050 Ti in here and for the Heaven benchmark, got a huge jump in FPS and the score in general. So we went from 51.6 with the GTX 1050 Ti to 126 with the RTX 3050. And the score that jumped from 1300 to 3183. So huge difference here. All right, here's uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider again. This is 1080p medium settings. And we ended up with an average FPS of 77 here. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p medium settings. Actually thought I was going to do better here. Thought I was going to hit at least 60 FPS, but we came close to 58 FPS on medium settings. And uh, it actually suggests the preset should be high, but uh, I would probably just keep it at medium settings. All right, and here is Spider-Man Remastered. This is 1080p uh, medium settings, and you'll notice uh, I'm getting you know, some stuttering here, some screen tearing as well. Alright, so to help eliminate the screen tearing, I turn casing on and I feel like it does run a lot better, although I never go above 60 FPS here. And next up we have Doom Eternal. This is 1080p on high settings.
All right, this is Black Myth Wukong. Uh, I actually don't have this game, but you can download the benchmark tool on Steam. So this is 1080p, low settings. And we got an average here of 36 FPS. And, you know, after watching the benchmark tool run, just felt like it didn't really look too good at all. And finally, we have Fortnite. This is performance mode 1080p and averaging, you know, over 130 FPS here. Usually stays between 130 and 140 here. So not too bad, but I feel like I was getting similar FPS with the GTX 1050 Ti. All right, so the Optiplex 9020 still proves to be the GOAT, at least in my opinion. Uh, I had no issues running Windows 11, and hopefully it continues that way. And the RTX 3050, it can run a lot of games, although in some games the GPU usage does hit 100%. And as much as I love this PC, though, I would probably only pick one up if you can get them for super cheap, like $50 or under cheap. But if you already have one, there's really no reason to get rid of it. You know, it can run Windows 11, no problems. Um, if you're still using one of these Optiplexes, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to do it for this video. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching.